In last year's budget, we talked about laying the foundations, setting up our systemic approach and making sure services had the resources they needed to participate in that. We provided then 131 million over four years towards sexual violence services, so that's still rolling out, to enable them to do their work instead of organising sausage sizzles to survive. This year, we're putting in 181 million to family violence services. That covers refuges, helplines, community agencies, and also those who support the people who use violence to stop. And it also covers the services who look after victims of elder abuse, a form of family violence that needs a specific response. The New Zealand Longitudinal Study of Ageing concluded that 10% of people over 65 and living in the community experience abuse. Mm. And they need to be protected in the same way other New Zealanders are. This funding also ensures the people who are doing this incredibly important mahi are paid a fair wage that reflects pay equity and pay parity. So services can engage and retain staff as well as ensure they get good training supervision, and supervision. These initiatives taken together represent the second biggest single budget contribution to the work to end family and sexual violence in our history. The biggest was last year. Over two years, this government has committed over half a billion dollars towards this work. This demonstrates the commitment of this government to ending family violence and sexual violence and going hard at it, while acknowledging that this is long-term work. The spending stands alongside, but separate, from any additional COVID-19 related family and sexual <coughs> violence fund spending we will make, and is also on top of MSD's support package to MSD, um, MSD's support package for NGOs like Women's Refuge that was announced on the 26th of March. So today is another marker in time and our work towards ending family and sexual violence. And to, to speak to the specific package in more detail, I'd like now to hand over to Ange. Look, I'm pleased and excited to be here today um, discussing what really can only be described as a transformational announcement. We've been waiting with some anticipation uh, to see demonstration of this government's expressed commitment to addressing family violence, and we're not disappointed. Uh, like many New, Zealand, New Zealanders, women's refuge workers have been continuing their work through the COVID-19 lockdown. It's been a, a time of great uncertainty and anxiety for all of us as we upended and reimagined the way we delivered services. <coughs> I'm proud of the way refuges responded. There's no disruption whatsoever to the services we offered. And I'm proud too of the speed with which the government responded to our concerns uh, when we started talking about the costs refuges were facing as we scrambled uh, to, to source alternative accommodation once our safe houses, existing safe houses, became safe bubbles. Demand for our services has increased over the course of the lockdown, some 35% increase on the same period last year. And with that increased demand has come the need to be flexible, to rapidly pivot from face to face to largely remote processes, while still making sure that the safety of women and their children was maintained. And without that additional funding support that was provided, we would have struggled to meet those challenges. In fact, I think it would have been almost impossible. And I also want to take this opportunity to pay tribute to the thousands of New Zealanders, both individuals and businesses, who've supported our work um, through their generous donations. To those donors, um, both old and new, thank you from the very bottom of our collective hearts. As the immediate crisis eases, um, we remain anxious about demand on our services over the next few months and probably years to come. 
We entered lockdown with the benefit of knowledge from international colleagues further down the COVID uh, lockdown path. We expected that we could learn from their experiences, and we have. <coughs> Our experience mirrors these and theirs in many ways, especially the reductions in some key indicators, suggesting the barriers lockdowns create for women seeking help and for those uh, worried about the safety of friends and family. We believe the full impact has yet to emerge. One thing I can be sure about is that in a country with one of the highest rates of family violence in the world, shamefully, this won't have changed overnight. We know that strained economic conditions uh, are a perfect incubator for family violence. Increased unemployment, growing emotional and psychological distress, along with potential increases in self-medication, will provide fertile ground, ground for family violence. These conditions are going to be with us for some time and we have to be ready for what's to come. And that's why this is such a timely and welcome package. The package just outlined by the Under Secretary has been a long time coming. And while it's only taken a few brief moments to describe, this in no way captures the intense work by many people over the past couple of years to get us to this point. What we see here exemplifies what's possible when government and NGOs come together to work in partnership. Through the work of the Joint Venture Business Unit, I hope this is something we're going to see much more of in the family violence space in years to come. In essence, the funding package announced here uh, places family and domestic violence providers like, like us at Refuge on a solid path to sustainability for the first time the first time ever. What this means is for us is the ability to pay our workers what they're worth. It's going to enable us to recruit and retain kaimahi in a way never before possible. What it'll mean is that we're no longer having to appeal to people's passion for the work or rely on their commitment and goodwill to work long volunteer hours on top of their usual work. Most of all, it will enable us to continue to provide critical services to some of the most vulnerable women and children in Aotearoa, New Zealand. There is, of course, much more to be done, but we have new optimism that our voice has been heard. We're in discussions with the Ministry of Social Developments, for instance, about the length of our contracts, and we're confident that our partners understand the challenges created by short-term arrangements, and we look forward to talking more about that with them. I'd like to acknowledge other items in the package in this package as well. I need to thank government for their recognition of the sadly growing issue of elder abuse. That is really a, a hideous issue. So too their signal of confidence and support for the critical prevention work of stopping violent services. Now if we're ever going to get on top of this we have to turn the tap off. I look forward to hearing more about the non-fatal strangulation partnership that was mentioned. In closing, uh, Women's Refuge has worked hard in recent years to build a solid partnership with government, ministers and officials. And we've worked hard to ensure that family violence has remained a priority. I'm delighted to see this long process of honest and respectful dialogue come to fruition in this announcement.